Okay, good morning, grade 10s. Uh, brace yourself. This is what I think is probably the toughest of all the factoring that we do, okay? And it's called factoring trinomials in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. It's what I call, and we would have written this down, and I'm going to, if you go to the Google Classroom, the notes are going to be there, but, you know, we need to talk it out. I call it decomposition. So the first thing I just said to you, if I was standing up at the front of the chalkboard, I would said, what does the word decompose mean to you? Right? And we would have had some conversation and maybe a few laughs or whatever. But really what I want you to know is it means that something's going to break down. Okay? And hopefully it's not me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do some of these questions. In fact, we're going to do this whole assignment together. And I'm going to star a few of them. We're going to come back to them. Because remember, at the very first day of starting factoring, I said to you, we're going to start with greatest common factor and it's important because we are going to have to check for that every single time. So in uh, hindsight, making this assignment, I probably should have put these two questions not first. Okay, so we're just going to start and we're going to come back to them. So when I teach uh, all the types of factoring, I always give them nicknames, right? So gr grouping, factoring by grouping a squiggly line. Okay, factoring by product sum, I call salt and pepper. So I call decomposition circus tint. I don't know why I came up with that one, but I do. And so just a little thing to try and get your brains kind of engaged. So you can see that what's different about these questions is that there is a numerical coefficient greater than one sitting out in front, okay, in the first term. So this is maybe why I call it circus ten. In order to find the product sum, we have to multiply the first term's coefficient with the constant in the back, and that's going to become our new product, okay? So we need to find... Two numbers multiply together to give us 21, and the sum's going to stay the same. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you right now something, okay? We do factoring by decomposition, which becomes factoring by product sum. Now we're going to factor by grouping shortly, and lastly, we're going to factor by greatest common factor. This is the big kahuna of all of them, okay? This includes everything. So you, you've learned this already, though, right? So we're just going to write down the factors of 21, 1 and 21, 3 and 7. Okay, and now we have to figure out which set of factors is, can we get to add up to negative 10. And we know that it's going to be negative 3 and negative 7. So now I'm going to pick these two. And now this is where the decomposition comes in. So now pay rapt attention to my soothing voice. This term stays the same. It is this one here that we are going to decompose. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 10 and we're going to break it down. What are we going to break it down into? Negative 3 and negative 7. Now, it won't matter what order you put these in, but for me, I guess I'm a little bit more type A than I like to admit. I want to put my, I, I, I like to group my numbers where I think they make sense. So I'm going to put the negative 3x here. Don't forget the x. We're breaking down 10x, so we have to have that x there. Then I'm going to take the negative 7 and I'm going to put it here, and then this last term stays the same. Okay, so now you double check. Negative 3x minus 7 more is indeed negative 10x, so you know that you decompose that properly. Okay, you pick the right set of factors. So now, let's go back in time. Okay, and we were in class together when we did this. When we see that we have four terms, we are going to factor by grouping, squiggly lines. So we're going to break that in half, and now we're going to factor by greatest common factor. All right, so what's the greatest common factor that we can take out of 3x squared minus 3x? It's a 3 and an x, and we're left with x minus 1. What's the sign that's sitting here? A negative. Greatest common factor of 7x and 7 is 7. Negative 7x divided by 7 is x. Positive 7 divided by negative 7 is negative 1. And how can you be 99.9% .9 sure that you did this right? Both of these are the same. That becomes our first factor. And the stuff on the outside becomes our other factor. Okay, so there's the first one done. All right, let's move over here. We got a 2 times a negative 21. Got to watch those signs, people. That's important. And then we have a sum that is negative 11. So now we got to write down all the factors of 42. 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14, 6 and 7. I think that's all of them. Okay, well, there's no way we can make 1 and 42 add up to negative 11. No brainer. 2 and 21 won't work, but bingo, 3 and 14 will negative 11. So one of these is going to be a negative because I have a negative product. It's going to be the 14. Negative 14 plus 3 is negative 11. So now I know that those are my two factors. I'm going to go over here, remembering that the first term stays the same. Which one of these would I put together? I'd probably put the 14 there. It won't matter though. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna have a plus 3x minus 21. So just in my brain, the two and the 14 go better together and the three and the 21 go well together, but it won't matter, it really won't. Okay, now I double check my math. Negative 14 plus three is indeed negative 11x. So I know I'm right, I have four terms. I'm gonna to move to factoring by grouping. What's common to two x squared and negative 14? A two and an x, and I'm left with x minus seven. What sign is sitting here? Positive. What's a common factor for three and 21? Three. When I divide, I get x minus seven. How am I sure that I'm right? These two are exactly the same. I always write that common one down right away, and there's my other factor. Okay, now let's go, let's keep going here. I gotta pick one here. We're gonna go back up here, I guess, and I'm gonna show you. Okay, this one's a little tougher because what you have to check for every single time is a greatest common factor, and it should pop out at you that five, 10, and 15 share a common factor of five. And now we break that down. And now we have to do product sum. We can go back to product sum. We don't have to worry about factoring by decomposition because there is a one in here. It's not greater than one. So two numbers that when we multiply them together, we get negative three. When we add them together, we get negative two. Okay, so the only factors for three are one and three. Which one's gonna be the negative? The negative three, because one minus three is negative two. So we have five as our greatest common factor. We cannot forget that. That is now a factor that we have to write down. And x plus one, because that's the first factor we picked, times x minus three. And we talked about this when we were uh, in, in just at the beginnings of um, our factoring unit, is that we can have more than two factors. Sometimes we have to take out a greatest common factor and then we're gonna factor by a different method. Okay, it's very important that we don't forget that. If I only wrote down the x plus one times x minus three, we're not gonna get five x squared minus 10 x minus 15, which is the trinomial that we are trying to uh, factor. Okay, so we're gonna try another one of these, what I call tougher, but they're not really, because you should know this. Greatest number that we can take out of six, 15, and 21, and that is three. And we're left with two x squared minus five x minus seven and now we're going to throw it all together now we do have to factor by decomposition because you can see we have a number bigger than one there so we do the circus tent product's going to equal negative 14 and the sum is going to be negative five so two numbers multiplied together give us negative 14 added together give us negative five and again if you're not catching on to this first thing i want to see is this chart over here one and 14 two and seven so there's no way we can make one and 14 add up to negative five. So let's cross those out and let's concentrate on these. What can I do so I can get two and seven, those two factors to add up to negative five, make the seven a negative. So if I had two minus seven, I'd get negative five and two times negative seven is negative 14. And now I'm gonna throw this all together. I can't forget that three. So everyone's got a different coping strategy. I just keep writing it down every single time. Some people don't like it, so they circle it or highlight it and remember to throw it in in the answer in the end. Now I need to decompose the 2x squared plus 2x minus 7x minus 7. You see, I like those numbers together, but you could have put the negative 7x here and the positive 2x there. It's going to work out. Write my 3 down. What's the greatest common factor of 2x squared plus 2x? A 2 and an x, and I'm left with x plus 1. Here starts with a negative, so I take out a negative. I can take out a 7 as well x plus one. How did I get that plus one? A negative divided by a negative. How do I know I'm right? These are both the same. What can't I forget? That greatest common factor. And I'm running out of room here. I'm sorry. First factor is three. Second factor, x plus one. Last factor, the two x minus seven. Okay, I'm at nine minutes here. So I'm just going to break for a minute. I want you to kind of digest that. Okay, I'm gonna attach this assignment half done, okay? And you can try a few, but I'm gonna return on the second video and I'm going to finish up the next few questions, okay? So I just want you to read over, maybe listen to the video two times, okay? And just see, this is like the toughest. After this, the last couple of factoring that we have to learn is gonna seem like a cakewalk after this, but this is truly very important. All right.